The Tesla Cybertruck is a beast. On the low end, it can tow 7,500 pounds, and on the high end, 14,000 pounds, which is more than an F-150 can at the top end of 13,200 pounds. A Toyota Tacoma, for comparison, is anywhere between 3,500 and 6,800, so much less. A Dodge Ram 1500 is up to 12,750, and a Silverado is up to 13,400, just edging out the F-150. But believe me when I say, none of that matters at all. Let's free the data. Before we get into why towing capacity is a pointless measure of a truck's worth, we need to figure out and go back in time to understand why we in the US love trucks to begin with. America, as you know it today, grew from small farming communities that primarily used one or two horse wagons to move their goods around. So, you know, back in the early settler days of this country, you basically had people taking what they grew on their land to the markets, to the kind of, you know, villages and places where they would sell them. So people would buy them and we could all, you know, survive. And and so they needed something like a truck. At the time, trucks didn't exist, so horse and wagon. Fast forward a little bit and you have a budding entrepreneur that really wanted to do something different in the horseless carriage space. And so he created basically what we know of as an assembly line. And with that, they created the Ford Model T. Of course, that was Henry Ford. And this is where a lot of us in really America think of the auto industry beginning was with him and his innovations in manufacturing with the first truck, the Model T. So after Ford launched the Model T in 1908, they began production. Trucks became a big thing. No longer did you need a horse and wagon. You now had this thing which could haul more, it could go further. It was just generally a better option for you to move your goods from your small farm into the now growing cities. So fast forward to World War II and we needed to build out our infrastructure in order to support moving of goods across the country. So guess what? we built things that fit perfect for trucks. This is why in the United States, we have such long straight roads, as well as very wide, much, much bigger spaces for vehicles to travel on. And if you go in the cities and compare that to a European city, it is a drastic difference in terms of the overall amount of space dedicated to vehicles. And this is very much by intention for trucks to be able to do their job. As World War II came to an end, the infrastructure stayed, trucks became a thing, and the, the lore in this country of how a truck symbolized or represented freedom was born. And that brings up today's sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an incredibly effective home security system that will make sure your home is safe. Your home is professionally monitored 24 seven. So if anything happens, they'll make sure the police get called. They've got sensors to cover every window, room and door, plus lots of great extras like water sensors, temperature sensors and more. It's all really easy to use and you can get around the clock protection for just 50 cents a day with no contracts. Personally, I started using Simply Safe a few months ago before we ever had any relationship here because I definitely felt with my kids and everything else that I just needed something. My cameras that I was using to monitor just weren't enough. So I invested in them a while ago. I got a great deal and I put sensors all around the house. I painted some to match kind of the aesthetic, very important to my wife. I got just the base station with the window and door sensors and one motion sensor. And the cool thing is, is that when I use it at night, I put it in home mode. So the motion sensor's off, you get up, get a drink of water, whatever, you're fine. But if any door or window were to open that wasn't supposed to be open, it would trigger the alarm. An additional thing I found really kind of just helpful in terms of peace of mind was the panic button. So this way, if anyone gets past any of the sensors somehow, then you have a button that you can just hold for two seconds and it will trigger the alarm, call the police, do all those kind of things. In terms of setup, it took me, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. It was more so about finding how many of these I needed around the house and which ones we wanted to secure. Then once I got them, it was literally just unpeeling some double-sided tape and sticking it and then registering it to the base, which really was seamless. It was about as seamless as anything is in terms of setup from a technology standpoint. So if you've been curious about this or any other products like this, I encourage you to check out what they have to offer at simplysafe.com slash teslanomics. Thanks for sponsoring the show, guys. And now let's get back to the video. So yeah, America loves trucks, but we don't really need them or use them. 
The automotive research firm Strategic Vision does a study each year of 250,000 people that goes super in depth on people's buying experience, and it turns out, 75% of truck owners use their truck for towing one time a year or less. Basically never. Nearly 70% of truck owners go off-road one time a year or less. Basically never. And a full 35% of truck owners use their truck for hauling, putting something in the bed, once a year or less. Almost never. However, this doesn't keep people from continuing to buy them. The Edwards study also showed that nearly 80% of people who are replacing a full-size truck will buy another full-size truck, the highest loyalty rate of any vehicle category in the market. And this bodes well for Tesla, as they were just voted by autotrader.com the most loved brand of any automaker. In addition, a recent survey by Bloomberg from Tom Randall and team showed that 98% of their 5,000 plus respondents would buy their car again. This was specifically focused on the Model 3. And 99% said that they would recommend it to others. So truck people are like Tesla people, except Tesla people like their cars more than truck people like their trucks but they keep buying them. It's kind of this weird circle. We're all really one and the same, I think, here. Truck people have an affinity towards trucks. I'm a truck guy. I only buy trucks. Something about their identity. Tesla people very much in that same camp for different reasons, but essentially the same concept here, just different ends of a spectrum. So trucks are like cars, but more convenient. In fact, if you look at trucks nowadays, they very much resemble cars with four doors and beautiful, luxurious interiors, heated seats, all the kind of amenities you would expect in a high class or luxury sedan are now available in trucks, which is kind of ironic because if a truck is really meant for work, these are not really the things that you're usually gonna be looking for, but they are available and they do cost a pretty penny. And like I said, people don't really use trucks for towing stuff or moving loads in the bed or going off road. So basically all the reasons to buy a truck, people don't actually use them for. So that's it, trucks are dead. Long live the Tesla Cybertruck. Wait just a minute, Tesla fanboy. There, there is more to this story here because there definitely is a segment of the market where trucks are being used that electric vehicles, specifically the Tesla Cybertruck and any of the other ones, really don't have a shot at replacing currently. When it comes down to towing things, and I'm not talking about taking your boat out, I'm talking about heavy duty machinery used in construction, there are trucks that do the job and a Tesla Cybertruck or a electric F-150, whatever, technically could do the job, but it doesn't really make sense. Basically what it comes down to is electric vehicles with the most advanced batteries available on the market right now, the lithium ion cells that Tesla makes, just don't have enough energy packed in them to deliver what is necessary to tow these massive loads and then be able to recharge quickly and kind of just be used in a common setting that isn't incredibly more uh, cumbersome than what the current options are. But wait, the Cybertruck is so much more efficient. Electric motors are better. Yes, yes, yes. But they're not that much better to make up for that difference. Even if the Cybertruck was twice as efficient at towing something than the F-150, it still isn't good enough from an efficiency standpoint. Now, there are lots of arguments out there to be made about the cost of charging is so much cheaper than the cost of fuel. Uh, you know, economics-wise, from a mechanical standpoint, you're gonna have less repairs and all these kind of things. Yes, 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 there are ways to rationalize this. But right now, because of the, the huge disparity in energy storage from a gas car to an electric car, I just don't see it really making total financial sense to do this with a Cybertruck or an electric F-150 or whatever compared to an actual heavy duty truck that is meant to pull things for a job site or taking stuff to the desert or whatever. I just don't see people willing to do it yet. But of course, the point here is that towing capacity outside of those couple use cases does not matter. And you would think that we wouldn't care either, but when it comes to buying something, especially something like a truck, which is a part of somebody's identity that is a truck person, a truck guy, truck girl, whatever, it's, it's not a rational, logical decision. It is an emotional one. So when Ford, advertises 13,200 pounds towing, and Chevy comes out and says 13,400 pounds, 
you see that it's basically just a marketing tactic. It's not something that we should really care about. And you know, from the metrics in terms of the marketing value, yeah, the Tesla Cybertruck does tremendous. The Rivian uh, R1T does tremendous. Uh, presumably the electric F-150, the Bollinger, all these things from just a pure spec standpoint do great. But who cares? They're pure vanity metrics. They don't actually mean anything. To me, a much more fun metric, which does translate, at least for the majority of people, into something that is real, is your zero to 60 time. And this is where the Tesla Cybertruck absolutely dominates. The zero to 60 time of a Ford Raptor, the latest one I could find, was zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds, which is, for a truck, tremendously fast. For an electric car, that's, that's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, not even in the ballpark of what we would consider uh, quick um, from a zero to 60 standpoint. So if the Tesla Cybertruck can get zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds, I mean, you're beating you know, 90s Ferraris off the line. It's crazy, crazy how quick that is. And if you've been in a Tesla, especially a performance one, you know that feeling. Imagine getting that feeling in this big monster truck, which is so futuristic and wild. That is something that I think every single person that owns one will experience and will do. So that is a metric where there is something that's being advertised. Again, we'll have to wait till it actually comes out. I do believe Tesla will be able to hit that number or at least get very close to it, which just totally destroys the competition. Not that trucks going quick off the line is a thing that people compete on, except for like, you know, aftermarket deals. But uh, that is something where there is a marketing metric being used and it translates to something people will use in the real world. And that is where I think we should focus our attention in terms of what matters when it comes to buying one of these vehicles or any vehicle for that matter. I'm curious what you guys think. Leave me a comment down below. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one.